So why no one can fathom it? So while it is a beautiful and reverent prayer, what we need to know is that it is a prayer that we can actually truly rely on. We can be sure that whatever Jesus asks for in this prayer, the Father will give to him. And that's because Jesus did this prayer. I mean, imagine if there's any prayer in the world that God will answer for sure, it will be the prayer of His one and only Son. Now, for this morning, we're just going to look at Jesus' prayer for His disciples. Uh, we're just going to look at this, that short section. Uh, now, it is true that what He prayed here is specifically directed to His original disciples. However, the general truth of what He said still applies to all of us who are followers of Jesus today. And a lot can be said about this prayer, but for this morning, I will just deal with a few verses or thoughts that seem most relevant to us. So I'm not really going to go verse by verse today. I will try to simply present a few things about this prayer that tie into what Christ says about His vision for the church. Uh, in this prayer, Jesus first describes who He was praying for. Jesus describes His disciples. Jesus says that He prays for people whom Jesus has manifested God's name and whom God gave to him from out of the world. I don't know what you mean by that. Uh, manifesting God's name simply means that Jesus has shown God's character to his disciples. Jesus showed who God is through his teaching, his humble obedience, and his ministry. He showed not just his disciples, but also the character of God, his holiness. His power, His goodness, his sovereignty, justice, truth, and mercy. And on the cross, Jesus displayed for us the glory of God's love and grace for sinners. And at the same time, Jesus displayed also the perfect justice of God as the Father poured out His wrath upon sin. And this is taken on by His beloved Son on the cross. In addition, Jesus describes his disciples as not just those whom he has shown God's character. He also describes them as those whom God gave to him out of this world. Uh, a more simpler way of saying this is that Jesus' disciples are those people whom God has chosen from this world and who believe that Jesus shows us who God, the Father, really is. It's still complicated. So in other words... <laughs> If you're a follower of Christ, Jesus is describing you. Jesus has shown you who God is. And you have put your faith and trust in Jesus, whether as a child or whatever period of life you came to saving faith. Uh, when that happened, you actually were separated or set apart from others here in this world because now you belong to God. And because you belong to God, you're call to a different way of living. You're called to a different way of life. As followers of Christ, we're God's own people who are, they will say, in the world, but not of the world. Um, I'm sure all of you have heard that phrase, in the world, but not of the world. Um, we are God's people who are in the world, but not of this world. And being in the world, but not of this world, doesn't mean that Christians are from outer space. Of course, that's not the case. Uh, what this means is that as Christians, we follow a different way of life from the rest of the people of the world. And that's because we belong to God. We have our allegiance, or we are loyal to God. So, based on this prayer, what is Christ's vision for His church? What does He want His church to look like in the future? In this prayer, maybe we can see three things. So I'm actually going to do a three-point thing instead of verse by verse. Uh, vision number one is this. In simple terms, Jesus wants everyone in this church to be faithful and loyal to God. This is what he asked for in this prayer. He said in verse 11, I am no longer in the world, but they are in the world, and I am coming to you. Holy Father, keep them in your name, 
which you have given me. Jesus tells God that he is leaving his followers behind and, and that he is coming to God. So he prays that God the Father will keep all of them in his name. And that means that the Father will keep his people safe and loyal to God. Even as Christ will no longer be physically present in our world, he prays to God the Father and that the Father will watch over his followers so that they can persevere in their faith. In other words, by God's power, Jesus wants us to continue to be faithful and follow Christ. Uh, notice here that Jesus did not ask that we should all become millionaires. He did not ask that the Lord, he didn't ask the Lord that we should all get more honor or glory or comfort in life. Instead, Jesus asks that we in the church may continue to be faithful even if we are in the world and not of this world. Jesus prays that we remain true to God and God's values even if everyone else has different values than us. Desire for things including money, you know, that's such a high value. Um, unfortunately, there are other churches out there that may tend to value things of the culture, uh, including materialism, instead of God. There are churches or Christians that measure success in material ways. Um, numbers of people in the church, numbers of supposed converts, impressive buildings, a large stockpile of cash in the, in the church bank account. But for some of them, they're not really concerned at all with the people's faithfulness to God. They're not concerned about people growing spiritually. They're not concerned about people transforming and becoming holy. They're not concerned about knowing more about the Bible or obeying God's teaching and praying to God. They're not concerned that they're not becoming better people and becoming more like Jesus. There's this church I know in Lexington, Kentucky. Uh, it was a church that I attended on and off for about a year or so. Uh, the pastor of that church was very charming. He was very charismatic. Uh, people loved him. The church grew quickly after a few years, maybe just five or six years grew from zero to about 3,000. It had many converts. It had much money from giving. And the church promoted that it had many converts, much money, and it's building new church buildings. But unfortunately, its members were trained to love the pastor instead of Jesus. All the new members would say how great the pastor was, and then they would quote the pastor instead of Jesus. The members did not really study the Bible, but instead bought the pastor books.